Well, I really wasn't planning on doing another laser review on this channel. However, my plans changed when Xtool offered me a fiber and diode combination laser that has the potential to replace both the lasers I currently use in my knife making shop. In review, a fiber laser like my current 20 watt comm marker B4 excels in etching steel, while a diode laser like my 20 watt Xtool 1 Pro shines when cutting and engraving natural materials like wood and leather. It is because of these strengths and weaknesses that my shop currently has one of each laser type so that I can etch my maker's mark onto my custom knives with the fiber laser and cut my leather sheaths and templates with a diode. In walks the 20 watt Xtool F1 Ultra. This system has both a fiber and diode laser on board that utilizes a mirroring system which negates the need for a gantry moving closely above your work. In today's video, I'll not only show you how this F1 Ultra stacks up to my current lasers, but we'll also highlight the free Xtool software that comes with the device. In addition, we'll be covering what utility the conveyor belt adds to the machine, and we'll even have a demonstration on how to emboss brass for leather stamping. When unpacking the machine, there were no surprises. Xtool does a fantastic job at packaging their lasers, which was also evident to me with the D1 Pro. Assembly was quick and with the user guide and phone app, I was able to get the machine connected to my home Wi-Fi network. This is key since you'll be able to send jobs to the laser without a physical connection, which in my opinion is very convenient. They also sent me the Xtool smoke purifier that connects to the back of the laser. I've been using this purifier while testing the laser and can say that it has a significant amount of suction power. It seems to work best when the enclosure is closed around the workpiece but I can also see it sucking up smoke and fumes when cutting leather on the conveyor with the door open. New laser users, myself included, don't tend to think about how lasers throw off particulates when engraving, but they definitely do, and a filter like this is good for our health. In a more permanent location, I plan on routing the exhaust of this air purifier outside of my building. In this first section here, we'll be outlining how I etch my maker's mark on handmade custom knives, so let's get started. So I've had some time to play around here in Xtool's Creative Space program. Uh, I've found that it actually has a ton of features in it, but the thing I'm gonna go over right now is how to etch in my maker's mark on a piece of scrap steel. So step one is you wanna get your image in an SVG or DXF format. I'm going to be using an SVG file for my maker's mark. You could just click and drag that into the Creative Space. Uh, you can say, yes, you wanna scale it because it's huge and then you reduce its size by just dragging the corners. Now, if you notice, there is a background here, and if you went to try to process this image and etch it onto your steel, it would look like just a blob of a rectangle. So we can come back here, and we have to uh, kind of detach this background from the text. In order to do that, you come over here to the right and say ungroup, and that should allow you to move the background off of your text. So I have this background here. I'm gonna go ahead and hit delete, and then I'm gonna just get rid of all the purple pieces there. I'm gonna select all these items and hit group, and then I'm gonna scale it down to about one half of an inch. So I'm gonna come up here to the width, and I'm gonna go 12.5, which is around the half inch. And here we go, we have my maker's mark. So to see what we're etching, I'm gonna click away from this panel, and then I'm gonna hit refresh on the camera. So this should show what's actually sitting on the laser right now. You can see I have this old test piece from the Commaker laser. So I'm gonna go ahead and start etching uh, pretty close to it just so I can see the comparison. I'm gonna make this 12, I thought I did that. I'm gonna hit the process button here. It should give us a time estimate on how long this etch will take. It's gonna take two minutes. All right, so now we're gonna come over here. We're gonna press start. I'm gonna get my camera set up. And then when I'm ready to go, I'll press that green button right there. One mistake I made there that was pretty obvious within the first pass is that I was using the blue light infrared laser and not the fiber laser. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that setting here to fiber. We have a low frequency in the 30s, which is right. And then the other settings are the same. Instead of 10 passes, I'm gonna do 25. And then I'm gonna go ahead and process this run. So this was the first iteration of testing I did on the F1 from my maker's mark. And while it did mark the steel, the results were not near my standards for an acceptable maker's mark. Since this machine has the same wattage as the COM marker, I went back and checked my notes from that review and found that I had the same issues with that machine at higher power settings. You can actually see some of those iterations here on the left of the mark that I just made with the F1. In addition, I realized during this test that the Xtool software, which is still in beta, won't currently allow higher pass counts than 10. This is something I hope they change in the future. 
After a bunch of trial and error, I think I figured out something that works fairly well for a Maker's Mark on high carbon steel. It's very similar to the settings I had on the COM marker. And in order to do it in this software, you actually have to create a few different duplicates, layer them on top of each other, so that you can get the appropriate number of passes. In this case, I'm gonna run about 40 passes. And I'm also gonna put one in here so that I can run a line around the edges to make sure the edges are nice and crisp. So this is what I got. I have the same Maker's Mark copy and pasted three times. I'm gonna actually do it four times. And on this fourth one, I'm gonna go to cut. I'm gonna make sure that it is a fiber laser. I'm gonna turn the power up to 30 and 50 speed. And on the cut, I'm gonna do 10 passes which is the max passes in this program. It would be nice if you can change that so I wouldn't have to do the stacking method I'm about to do. So if you look at these other four here, they are uh, 30 power, 50 speed, 10 passes, and as dense as I can get on the lines per centimeter and the lowest I can get on frequency. Now, I think the reason it works better at the lower power settings for a maker's mark is the higher power settings, you see some fuzziness around the edges. And I think maybe that's due to the to the higher heat or the just a the burn radius, so to speak, of the very tip of that laser. I'm not sure why, but at the higher power settings, I get really fuzzy edges. So to get all these together, I'm going to select them. Then I'm gonna come up here to the align options, and I'm gonna to go to align center. So they're all stacked right on top of each other. Now I'm not exactly sure what order they're gonna go in. I don't think it really matters here. So I'm gonna back off. I'm gonna click on the open area. I'm gonna hit refresh. I got my 1084 bar sitting in the machine right now. So here we go. And then I'm gonna just find a nice spot to put it. I'm gonna put it right in the middle of there so I can get very clear distinction of the, of the edges after I sand it. Then I'm gonna to go to process. Calculated that this burn is gonna take 18 minutes and 30 seconds, which is fine. And I'm gonna hit start, go over to the machine and hit the button. Note that the mark above this one is from the COM marker before with basically the same settings. When burning it in, it also had the same rusty look to it, which needs to be sanded off. I sprayed a little oil onto the mark and hit it with some 600 grit sandpaper. You can see here that it cleaned up nicely and it etched deeply into the steel. When looking at these three marks under the digital microscope, it is apparent that both the fiber lasers provided a much cleaner mark than the electrochemical etcher, which was my standard method before getting a laser. Honestly, any visual differences between the COM marker B4 and the X-Tool F1 Ultra in this zoomed in comparison is likely due to the lighting and the fact that the COM marker B4 had a little more cleanup sanding on the mark having been hit twice with the 600 grit paper. So in regards to the steel etching application, I'd say the X-Tool F1 Ultra matches the COM marker B4's performance. The real question that I plan on answering towards the end of this video is if the F1 Ultra can also replace the diode laser for large cutting projects when used in tandem with the conveyor belt. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, I'd like to show an etching run on an actual knife, and then after that, show off the bonus ability of the F1 Ultra, which is brass embossing for custom leather stamps. This is a demo knife I made recently using only cheap Harbor Freight tools. Normally I'd etch my maker's mark onto the blade before attaching the handle scales in order to dial in the sanding lines, but for the sake of demonstration, this shows the laser's ability. One feature of the F1 Ultra that is absent on other fiber lasers is the onboard camera, which really helps get things lined up. I still use the framing function, but the camera goes a long way with helping you get the appropriate marking size, orientation, and alignment. I'll for sure be adding dates and other mementos to the tangs in my hidden tang knives going forward, just in case they're ever dug up by an archaeologist a couple thousand years from now. This brass stamp blank came with the X-Tool laser in a test material pack. I think it's generally used for stamping wax when sealing envelopes, but I'm going to be using it to emboss a Maker's Mark stamp for my leather work. Here is a project where the X-Tool software really shines. To start, create a new project and then navigate to the AI button. At the top left of your screen, you'll see an option to create an embossment. Here you want to upload an image of your maker's mark and then select whether you want to emboss or deboss. Not knowing which would work better, I started off with the emboss and hit generate. When expanding the embossing preview, I found that this rendering raised and lowered sections in a mark that I wasn't expecting and would not stamp the leather very well. I reran the process but selected deboss instead, which did exactly what I was aiming for. Once you get something you like, all you need to do is select import to canvas to get it into your project. With the model imported into my project, I place my stamp onto the laser base and then refresh the image so that I can start lining everything up. Off camera, I spent a lot of time framing here to move the image around to get it lined up just right. Also note that you need to mirror your image so that the stamp actually is usable on leather. At the top right, I selected a brass coin as a material and then left the settings alone for this run. 
When I went to process, it calculated that this job would take four hours and 18 minutes. Once I started the job, I noticed fairly quickly that I was unexpectedly etching a square, and even though it was out of focus, the laser was cutting into my fixture table. To alleviate this issue without completely restarting, I paused the job and put some steel around the stamp to protect the table. I think this square was only etched in the first few layers of the design, which doesn't seem ideal, but at least I'll know for the next time how it behaves. After four hours of embossing, I think the stamp turned out great. I threaded a stud onto the back and inserted it into my arbor press. With a decent amount of pressure, the stamp provides an acceptable result on water-cased leather. I think I personally like my leather maker's mark to be stamped instead of laser burned into the leather, so this is really a nice option. The last thing I'll be going over in today's video is what distinguishes this machine as an all-around laser solution for my shop, the X-Tool conveyor belt. I routinely use my gantry diode laser for cutting out wooden templates and leather sheaths. Some of these templates can be over a foot long and wouldn't be able to fit on the F1 Ultra's base table, so my big question when getting this machine in the shop was if it could do cutting operations on the conveyor belt since this would allow me to replace both of my other two lasers with one machine. Before we do some big cutting tests, I'm going to set up and use the conveyor for a task it was designed for, which is batch work. To demonstrate this functionality, I will cut out some wooden circles from a piece of 3mm balsa wood and then spread them out on the conveyor belt randomly. In Xtool Creative Suite, I brought in my logo SVG and then combined it into one group before resizing it to around 26 millimeters in diameter. I changed the engraving settings to 70% power and 600 speed using the blue light diode laser, then clicked frame out material followed by fill. After that, you can hit process and start. The laser will visually locate your parts on the conveyor and start marking them. Once they're marked, it will move the table, recognize the parts in that section, and then continue marking. This process will go on until you shut off the job. So that's pretty cool, but I don't see myself doing a bunch of batch work like this as a knife maker. Let's see if it can do long cuts. I set up a leather test cut on the small cutting table that they sent me with the machine just to see if I can manipulate the settings in such a way to have it cut on the conveyor. Note that the only options right now on the conveyor settings are score and engrave, so you have to manually enter cutting settings on the engraved tab. I was pleasantly surprised to see that this worked and I was able to run a little test cut on a piece of leather. This prompted me to get my hands on a longer cutting table. I wasn't able to find any with the specific dimensions I needed for the conveyor, so I decided to cut down a cheap 500 millimeter by 500 millimeter honeycomb laser bed from Amazon to fit the conveyor appropriately. The angle grinder went through this table like butter and my sheet metal shears trimmed up the stainless steel backstop. To test the overall length of the cutting board, I ran a quick engrave on cardboard of one of my knife designs blown up to around 440 millimeters long. This worked perfectly. I then decided to run a realistic cutting test of a knife template from some 3mm balsa wood. As you can see, this also worked out great. After running these conveyor cut tests, I'd recommend that Xtool produce and sell a long cutting table as well as enable the cutting tab in their conveyor settings. I have some sheath work to knock out in the coming months and I plan on putting together a dedicated video on how I use this Xtool F1 Ultra to make crisp leather sheaths for my knives. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you can see how those sheaths work out. Overall, after using this F1 Ultra for a few weeks, I'm confident to say that for my uses, it can replace both of my current lasers. It is also arguably with the Xtool software and onboard camera, a much more user-friendly machine. For those of you who are into 3D printing, I feel like this Xtool system is similar to Bamboo Labs printers, and the com marker is more like the Ender printers. Both will get the job done, but in my opinion, the user experience is smoother and less daunting on the Xtool ecosystem. A good example of this is the material library, which allows you to get a solid starting point for your projects if you've never worked with the material before. With my other lasers, I find myself searching internet forums to get initial parameters for different materials. Other examples I've already mentioned are the Wi-Fi connectivity, the embossing AI generation, and the camera. They're also working on a curved surface workflow, which should be really cool since it may allow you to replace a rotary for some curved engraving task. Now it's not perfect, and like y'all saw today, the software needs some additional features like a higher pass count, the ability to cut in conveyor mode, and probably a cleaner way to show cut layers like Lightburn has. But it's admittedly in beta mode, and I see it as a good start. 
Well, I need to jump in here. I got this entire video edited and then learned more about the software and also got the new version 2.1.12. And I gotta say there are a couple features that I didn't notice originally and that got added to the software. First and foremost on the layers, if you look at the bottom left here, there is a stack of layers and I should have noticed this originally, but I did not. And this is how it works. You click on the stack down here you can see the items that you have. I have four test items here. You can even move them around. And uh, yeah, you get similar functionality to Lightburn. Some other things worth mentioning on the new software is that all of your options are now across the top. Your laser settings are on the right. And under the processing mode, you can now select flat, rotary, conveyor, or curved material, which I'm excited to play with. If you plan on using your laser in a mobile way, the COM marker is the way to go since you can take it off of the base and use it handheld. I also think that the rotary that comes with the COM marker has more native adjustability with a hinge for angled items, but there are some aftermarket 3D printed hinges for the X-Tool rotary if that's something that you need. The smoke purifier and pull down enclosure on the F1 is really nice, and I can see these being extremely handy if you're using this laser in a professional setting and have a high project output volume. The most glaring difference between the COM marker and the F1 Ultra is the price with the COM marker coming in at about $1,800 at the time of this video, and the F1 Ultra without the conveyor coming in at around $3,900. If you add the conveyor, you're talking about $4,300. But I think the argument is that you're getting two lasers in one with a diode laser on board as well as the fiber. The D1 Pro diode laser with the rotary is around $1,200. So if you add that to the COM marker, you're at around three grand. So while there is still some spread there between three grand and $4,300, I think it comes down to if you're willing to pay for the convenience of it all being in one machine. At the end of the day, I hope this video, along with my review of the COM marker B4 and the X-Tool D1 Pro diode laser, gives y'all enough information to make an informed decision on your shop's needs. There's no one-size-fits-all solution here, and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Major thanks to both X-Tool and COM marker for sending me these machines for testing and reviews. If y'all got any value out of this video and are going to be buying one of these machines, please use my affiliate product links in the description and top comment below. This goes a long way into helping to keep this channel running. Until next time, like, subscribe, and I'll catch y'all on the flip side.